There's a place known the world over for its legendary landscapes, wonderful people, and incredible fishing. This is Fort Smith, Montana, on the banks of the Bighorn River. Welcome to Trout Town. Wow, that fish is hot. Coming up on this episode of the new Fly Fisher, we're hooked up to a giant on the legendary Bighorn River with Bighorn Anglers. This big fish adventure is coming up next on the new Fly Fisher. <laughs> what a fish, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Bighorn Angler Fly Shop, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. The small Montana town of Fort Smith is home to just 107 permanent residents. Pretty near every single Fort Smithian is here for the fish. Be it the multi-species found in massive Bighorn Lake or the unreal trout fishing on the famed Bighorn River. There's some fish in here. There are three fly shops on the main strip, all next door to each other. And I'm here to tell you, for a sleepy little Montana trout town, Fort Smith is absolutely hopping. We're here for the trout. We're guests of business partners Pete Shanafelt and Mike Dewey. Bighorn Angler is the heart of Fort Smith. After all, their slogan is, where the legend began. One of the great things about the location of the Bighorn Angler is its proximity to the river. With multiple launch options, all within a short drive from the lodge, we load up and drive literally a minute and a half to our first put-in. Pete is our guide for this week, and we decide to start with two simple nymph rigs. This is Pete Shanafelt. He's the co-owner of the Bighorn Angler Fly Shop and Lodge. If you're looking for the ultimate in Bighorn Adventures, you gotta look these guys up. It's absolutely amazing. But this is the world famous Bighorn River. What do we got going on today? Well, we're in prime summer mode here on the Bighorn. We got a lot of PMDs popping off, caddis, some terrestrial fishing. The nymphin's been great in the morning. It's just an awesome time to be here. All right, let's get this boat out. We'll get to see what we can do. All right. Play the old chase the bobber game here. Fish, nice. How sweet is that? Not two minutes in. That's a good one too. Saw a flash of it. Now are we catching browns and rainbows up Bra here? Browns and rainbows, a lot of browns up here. This is probably gonna be a brown, um, but good healthy size up here. A lot of 15, 16 inch fish, all wild fish. These long leaders are kind of a pain. You got to maneuver that current with them, but once, you know, once their heads are up. Nice. Game over. Good work. Well, how do you like that? We're not even a hundred yards from the boat launch. <laughs> We've already got the first brown in the boat. Caught and released. I think this boat's for a good day, my friend. Oh, there he is. That's a fish. Ooh, rainbow? It's hot. Yeah. So we've got two, we've got a two fly system here under a balloon and um it looks like this one ate the carpet fly again what's the what's the bottom fly we're running just a little beadhead pheasant tail yeah on the bottom because we're getting kind of mixed to caddis and pmds and you know you can't really be just a standard pheasant tail right now i mean it's this fish a little better that looked oh, yeah. one thing we'll check especially if you hit bottom or something like that check it out yeah, we just hit bottom. It's a good idea to check it. We got a lot of vegetation in the bottom of the river. It's kind of a cool little trick instead of 
There's a couple different things, but well, this is one of them. You can get the middle fly, pull it hard, flick the moss off. You can pick it off the bottom one as well, or if you want, I just double it around. Nice. Sometimes when you get a bunch of junk on there. It's just easy to get it off. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting is, you know, there's always a tendency to fish the, the money stuff right away to your, on your first cast, right? And you cautioned me against that and asked me to fish close to my person. Um, drifted through a couple of times, nothing happened. Came even closer and sure enough, brown trout. Perfect. Iced. A little be better than average for this river, is it? Yeah, that's fairly standard, but I mean, for a fairly standard fish, that's a pretty darn good fish. That is a great fish. Oh, that one is, yeah, was they're super shallow. Super shallow, and it, I mean, it just stopped. This is a good brown. So Pete switched up the rig for this stretch, and he put a shorter nymph rig on than what he likes for the bighorn. This is a good fish. And um, why'd you do that? Well, what's happening right now is these foam lines, and there's not, they're not everywhere on the river, but they collect so many bugs drifting down these convergence zones. You can see come off these shelves. So your average rig we're fishing here is usually like seven, seven and a half feet deep from your indicator your shot. Um, this time of year though, these bugs, those PMDs will start emerging. Those fish will move up in the column because that food, those nymphs are just hanging a few, couple few feet under the water. Yeah. Sometimes you can get them like, I mean, you could run a dry dropper in there. Oh, nice fish, man. Yeah, that's a great fish. Woo -hoo. We round a big inside bend and Pete spots heads feeding regularly in very shallow water. We're watching a couple of really, really big brown trout on this inside bend here. Pete, how deep is it and how do you want me to fish it? So the water they're in is probably maybe a foot, a foot and a half of water. They're eating these bugs that are getting pushed inside this little soft ripple here. We're gonna approach them from behind here. Um, common tactic on the big horn. We're gonna kinda get a little behind and to the side of them. Um, try and land our fly mm, two, three feet above them. Don't wanna throw too much line over them. Obviously we got high sun right now, so these fish are gonna be pretty spooky, spooky but uh, yeah, and this is this is a big fish are hunting up here. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll stick them here and not run them off, but. We'll see what happens. No pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Don't, yeah, just don't screw it up. All right, don't screw it up and everything will be fine. Yeah, and put the sneak on him. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, because he's kind of moving in and out. Where'd he go? Are you kidding me? <laughs> they shouldn't be that speed. We worked these fish seemingly forever and couldn't get an eat. Talk about frustrating. Talk about fun. We see a new pod coming towards us from downstream and change groups. Yep. Dude. Nice. <laughs> we have worked so hard for this fish. We've made 15 fly changes. So we broke out a, a royal wolf, caught a fish, lost it, and now we've got a quill gordon on. So always have those old patterns in your box. You never know when they might come back. <laughs> That's a good fish. That's a good one. Yeah, and a great eat too. This fishery is just so fantastic. Nice, look at that. Look at that. A lot of work. Look at that. <laughs> nice, nice fish. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look, that's the kind of fish that they make stickers out of. <laughs> that's so sweet. That's a big fish. It's a big fish. Now what's interesting is I couldn't see the fly because I'm looking right into the sun and I'm casting upstream to this big brown trout. So I did something called fish the rise. I knew approximately where my fly was. And uh, as soon as that fish ate it, I knew to give it us half a second and then set the hook. How about that man? <laughs> nice. 
Nice. Solid rainbow. Yeah, 18. Yeah, 17, 18 right in Another fantastic day on the Bighorn River here at Fort Smith, Montana. We're gonna fish Pete's favorite stretch of river today, Big Rainbows. This is a rainbow trout section. Yesterday was browns, let's see what unfolds. All right, so we're up on a side channel of the Bighorn here. Um, got a big kind of convergence zone of currents. You got a lot of foam in here which traps a lot of bugs, holds a lot of fish just in this little tiny zone out here. Um, first spot we're fishing this morning, typically a little better when the bugs start going, but there are quite a few big fish that have been hanging right in this spot. So we're gonna go see if we can't get some. All right, cool. So we're uh, just setting up what I call kind of a short leash nymph rig. So I'm gonna start at the top. I've got just a butt section here, maybe, I don't know, 18 inches or so. Got a little yarny indicator on here. We're fishing a lot of water. It's kind of slow. The fish are hanging in a fairly shallow, slow zone. So we're gonna need something very, very, uh, very sensitive. So when you've seen those eats, it's gonna go down. A lot of times the big indicators, you're not gonna see the eats. So this yarn's awesome for that. From there, I've got pretty much just a loop and I'm tying off just a straight piece of, this is about like 10 pound, um, one X, something similar to that. Um, I've got, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three feet. Then again, kind of like our nymph rig, got just a little swivel, a little putty on there. From there down, I'm running 4X fluoro and 4X fluoro to both flies. So again, 16, 18 inches or so to that first fly. And right about the same to our second fly there. Well, first fish of the morning. And it feels like a good one. Pete says that this, this lower section of the river is a big fish section. There's not as many fish here, but they are big. And yeah, he's, he's pro proven correct. I haven't even seen it yet, but just by the way it's behaving. There we go. Nice. Good fish. So in Montana, it's legal to fish with two flies. Um, Two, fishing two flies is great. The only problem you have with fishing two flies is sometimes a fish will come and eat, let's say the point fly, uh, do a jump and the bottom fly gets caught in the fish's body. That's the downside and generally the hook pops out. And that's what's happened with this brown trout is that he ate, we watched him eat, but he got tagged in the adipose fin. And that's why he took me all the way down the river. We've decided to fish this spot exclusively all day today for good reason. If you look at the river dynamics in this pool, it really has everything fish would be looking for. A deep drop into the pool, two converging currents creating highly oxygenated water, not to mention the perfect grocery store food delivery aisle. Pool depths offer protection from birds of prey, but indicates we must be versatile in our presentation of these fish. We know as the bug activity heats up, fish will push into this pool and pools like it to feed easily. This kind of pool structure is a favorite of Pete's because the fish will eventually start surfing the pool, meaning they will use the complex currents to ambush emerging bugs. It's midsummer and the PMD hatch has been absolutely incredible. The fish are your indicator to the emergence of the hatch. This phenomenon is actually visible to the naked eye as seen from above allowing a watchful angler to present their nymphs to sight-casted fish while waiting for those fish to switch to eating dry naturals. Oh, this is a good one, Pete. Looks like a good one. It jumped, it looks like a big brown. So it's funny how the day goes on, you see more bugs, it gets really active. Starting to move, starting to eat. Nice. 
Big rat, is it brown? Brown, big brown. So fishing with a yarn indicator, uh, as we have been today, is a unique way of upping the level of sensitivity when these fish eat, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, this thing literally moved probably two millimeters. Yeah. It it hardly budged barely, at all. And you set right on them and... Yeah, and look at the result. A gorgeous, gorgeous 18 inch brown. How do you like that? Oh, that's a good one. Ugh. It's coming at me. <laughs> no, there he goes. <laughs> yeah, so these yarn indicators are the most sensitive thing I've fished with and any unnatural movement that you get, a little tiny tick, any kind of movement, set the hook. As guides often say, hook sets are free. And now I cringe to think how many fish I've missed <laughs> over my career because I haven't set a hook on on a uh, on an unnatural movement on on a indicator. So a oh, nice rainbow, nice rainbow, right in there. Speedy delivery. That's a good looking fish too, Pete. Beautiful fish, big bow. Very cool. Yeah. Dry fly. Oh, so good. Whoa. Oh, what a fish on a dry. Can't beat it. Just after lunch and we're watching this pool and they were coming up. They started coming up and eating PMDs. We got a little wolf on and a, and a merger. It's lights out fun. That's not that rainbow though, that's the brown. That's the brown. I fished a lot of places, and um, I would say that this is this is right up there with any any river in the lower 48, if not the world, uh, from a trout perspective. So for the fish in the bighorn, we have brown trout, rainbow trout. Those are our main staple fish. Um, you get a cutthroat here and there, cut bows. We're actually seeing quite a few of those the last couple of years. And then you get your odd fish. You know, we've caught smallmouth in here. You'll see some walleye. We've even seen a pike here and there. Um, of course, the elusive whitefish. So there's quite a bit of different fish to get on your line out here. Uh, we've got everything really. We've got guided fishing, we've got boat rentals, um, we've got lodging, we've got, um, we can sleep, it's over 50 beds, something like that, or 50 people, I should say. So we've got big houses. Um, we do drift boat rentals as well. Um, and we really specialize in all-inclusive packages, which is a big one, because I mean, you're out really in the middle of nowhere here, Fort Smith, and there's no restaurants, there's nothing. So we try to make it as convenient as possible for people to come fish the Bighorn. It's just, a, it's a fish factory, it's a food factory. Um, there's a lot of different ways to fish the river. It's always changing, you know, every week there's, you're figuring out different strategies. You know, the, the popular misconception, you know, especially when I moved out here, my buddies, you know, I got in Missoula, you have hundred miles of river within an hour you can float. And everyone said, you're going to be stuck on, you know, 13, 20 miles of river, but it's really not. I mean, some of these runs, you know, like we're sitting in some this morning that you know, those fish get going. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable to see how many fish um, show up in some of these spots. The other thing is the re resiliency, I can get that right, uh, of the, of the fishery. I mean, it, I haven't seen too many rivers that handle pressure well. And you know, at times we do get a fair amount of pressure, but I mean, the fish just eat. We have so, so many bugs and it's, it's just cool. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty amazing place. Um, you know, it has its little ups and downs here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty awesome.
Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely. There's, and, and, and we got to, like we are just talking about, we got a wide time frame. So it'll fit your schedule at some point. Um, the convenience factor, everything we offer here with the, the packages, um, lodging, it's, it's very convenient, it's very price point affordable. Um, you know, you're not spending bajillions of dollars. And, and then, I mean, our you know, staff, the guides are, I mean, some of the best on the river that we have. And you will, I, I can almost guarantee you fish. I, I don't want to say that, but pretty darn close. <laughs> The next day, Pete asks if I'd like to fish saltwater. Puzzled, being in Montana, I told him it was one of my favorite things to do with a fly rod. So we loaded up and headed out, not to the ocean, but to Big Horn Lake, a multi-species big lake that has a unique fishery available. Fishing for carp. Yep, carp, the golden bonefish. What an opportunity. All I can say is, are you actually kidding me right now? This is a surprise. We're not on the Bighorn, are we? We're not. We're on Bighorn Lake today, fishing for carp in this unreal place. This is the heart of the Bighorn in Montana. This is what feeds our river. This is what gives us cold water, and there's uh, nowhere else really like it. Carp fishing. Carp is it a big deal here? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, for some guys. It's, it's, a, it's a good alternative to a day on the river. It's fun. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. I know, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you can, there's all kinds of stuff up here too. We got walleye, trout, crappie, bass. Oh. It's, but we're going for carp today all right. on, on the dry. All right, dry fly. Dry fly, yeah. Sweet, let's do this. Fishing for carp is not unlike fishing saltwater on a flats boat, whether you're fishing for bonefish permit or, or what have you. Um, there's some things that you should be ready for because you got a quick shot to make. So what I like to do is number one, strip out as much line as you're comfortable casting and have it reversed at your feet. When I say reversed, I mean strip it out, cast the line out and then strip it back in so that you're not actually casting the bottom of the, of the fly line first. Secondly, most importantly, I like to stretch my arms out with the rod tip all the way out. That gives you enough uh, line and leader outside of your fly rod that you can actually place a quick cast and get that fly line moving real quick. So just a couple of quick tips to be ready because when those carp come in, you need to be able to present that fly super quick. <laughs> How cool is that? Super slow eat. We saw this fish finning in this flat and it was just so cool, man. That is super fun. So that's an opportunity. If you're gonna come carp fishing, you know, go to the local schoolyard with a dinner plate <laughs> and practice your precision casting because you've got to put it within two feet of those fish so that they can see it and come and grab it. He's a little one, but you know what? That's as close as you're gonna to get to salt water fishing anywhere without actually being in the salt. 100% fun. They're not trash fish. They've got a bad reputation, but they're actually an amazing sport fish to catch and release on fly. All right, let's let this guy go. All right, so one of the cool things about fishing for carp, and you're gonna think I'm absolutely crazy for saying this, but it's kind of like fishing for cutthroat trout. Cutthroat come up and they sip, and they do not eat very voraciously, really. They're real sippers. And it takes a little bit to get used to that when you set the hook on a, on a cutthroat. These carp are the same. They're very gentle sippers, and you actually have to wait for them to come up and go back down on the fly before you set the hook. And it's not a trout set. It's a gentle lift. They got really rubber lips and that hook buries in and chances are if you hook one, you're gonna land it. And what's neat about what we're doing here is Pete's got us positioned against this cliff bank. And it's a spectacular environment to fish in. 
But what he's done is he's got himself situated so that he doesn't have to do a lot of work. The fish are coming to us and they're actually tailing. Their backs are out of the water. You just wait, you make that precision cast, wait for them to sip it, fall, come tight, and it's game on. Super fun. All right, how fun is that? Now, another thing about carp is they're very hardy fish. I mean, you don't want to keep many fish out of the water for, for very long, but these ones you can really take your time, get some awesome photographs, and then let them go. So yeah, carp fishing, carp fishing for me is the, one of the coolest experiences you'll ever have. Um, they do get a bad name, but I mean, I challenge about anyone to come out and fish for some of these. They're very sensitive fish. They might not have the best eyesight, but they're pretty spooky. Um, it's, it's a blast though. It's, it's a complete opposite of trout fishing it's as, and i'd say as close to saltwater fishing it's great saltwater practice like i said honing your casting accuracy it just kind of helps out with all those techniques and onto other fishing types okay so for the setup fishing carp um specifically up here on bighorn lake like i said it's a mostly a dry fly fishery so you don't need a big beefy rod our fish aren't huge in here. You're typically gonna see fish in the six to say nine pound range. So I like a good stout nine foot six weight rod. We're running floating lines here. Good weight forward line that'll haul some distance and still fishes accurately at various distances is good. We're fishing a leader. I'm running maybe about a nine foot down to, we're fishing one or two X tippet for the most part. Um, Fly-wise, this time of year, we're later season, I would call it. A lot of small terrestrial stuff, ants, beetles. Sometimes that big stuff, you'll see them eat it, like the cicadas, hoppers, but a lot of times you'll get refusals on them. Some of these fish can't get it in their mouths, which is pretty funny to watch as well. The hippie stomper is one of my favorite carp flies to fish up here. The number one thing that Pete and I focus on from a business perspective is just making sure that, you know, um, year in, year out, we've got the best. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got kind of a, a span in terms of, you know, age. Uh, guides that have been fishing on this river for, you know, 25 years. Um, our head guide, John Simlin, has been, been fishing this river for a long time. Uh, we've got uh, our core guides, our full-time guides that have been fishing on this river for, for five years. I think we have a great core of guides. Uh, obviously, Pete is the anchor, is the head, head or the owner, operator of the Bighorn Angler, uh, myself is in a head guide position, and the, and the guides that follow, there's really no weak link. One of the most important pieces of structure one can use in a river is a bubble or foam line. Whoa! So we've been searching for a, a unique foam line today to 
try something different to try to see if we can get a fish out of a fast water foam line. And we did just that. Pete knows of this spot on the Bighorn that where two seams are coming together, two pieces of the river are coming together. And um, where those two pieces meet is a lot of good stuff going on. What's happening there, Pete? Yeah, it's just really, it's two big currents coming together, creating a soft spot in the middle, um, but pushes a lot of bugs just in this soft dead spot in the middle. And those fish are just hanging right in there feeding. They can go actually both sides of the current there if they want. Um, it's just a, it's a buffet really coming down that line. And you'll see that the foam line, it's got a clear indication of kind of what the currents are kind of mixing, churning that up, but also keeping a safe little spot for the fish to hang out so they're not fighting the current too much. So whether it's a, a foam line from a, um, a riffle or two pieces of the river coming together that collide, that is where the protein is and that's where you're gonna find the fish. I don't even get to fish my favorite spot. Oh. So, whoa. we're coming down this riffle and I just dropped my nymph rig into what I looked like would be a good seam. I wasn't even watching the indicator. And uh, all of a sudden this rainbow came and just crunched on it and immediately went right upstream as fast as it could go, crazy. Yeah, I got him. It's a good fish. Nice fish. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's a good one. Oh my gosh. All right, let's take a look at this behemoth. It's not a long one, but I'll tell you what. I do, know, I do not know what you guys are fe feeding these fish, but I'm here to tell you that that is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous what a fat fat rainbow trout all right let's get it back you know for the state of montana it's across the board um, these rivers they rule navigable waterways um, you can access the river on the banks and they go off the floodplain maps of where it'd been uh, from what i know is the last 50 years which is a huge i mean you got a lot of um, it's not just where the water was last year, you know, cause we've had high water and, um, I mean, sometimes this, this river gets super high. So essentially you're just, I mean, you've got at low flows like this and most of the year you can go about anywhere you want. I just, you know, wouldn't cut across someone's field or anything, but it's, it's an awesome thing about living in Montana and pretty much all the rivers have it. There's some fish in here. There's a couple. Here's the fun part, trying to land them. Got them on the reel, oh. Jeez. Pretty violent. Yeah, pretty violent. <laughs> what a fishery though, man. Pete added the some more tungsten putty to get down a little faster. Not come up, and uh, that helped. Two two drifts, two fish. Lost the first one. We'll see if we can get the second one to hand. Oh, that's a giant. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I think I, I, you're surprised. It's bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> oh my god. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, this is the fish. Is this a big brown? Dude. Oh, dude, biggest brown trout of my life. Are you serious? You say that every time. <laughs> I don't. How do you like that, huh? How do you like that 22 inch brown trout on a pheasant tail waiting in Montana? Just perfect. Well, how do you like that? That about does it for this episode of the new Fly Fisher. That was a fish of a lifetime. I wanna thank everybody at the Bighorn Angler, Pete Shanafeld, Mike Dewey, and the entire crew. We had a trip of a lifetime. The legendary Bighorn is truly legendary. 
it is. Thanks, thanks for everything, man. Thank you, Mark. Awesome. For everybody here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. My name's Mark Melnick. Adventure is out there. All you have to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you down the road. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Bighorn Angler Fly Shop, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,